I worked with few of the big companies and learned some of the best practices when it comes to Power BI reporting. So I thought to make a video on this in order to benefit you and implement the same in your company. Hi, I am Mohammad Adnan and welcome to my channel Tech 18. Here we discuss about the Power Platform like Power BI, Power Apps and Power Automate as well as YouTube and Excel things. This channel, or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. Now, let's get started. So, when it comes to the industry best practices, there are seven things you need to follow. The first thing is the theme. The theme must contain the company base colors, its font size, and font type as well, font family. So, all these things come under the theme. The next thing is the report name. So the report name is also must so that the user can understand what the report name is actually. And the next thing is the data refresh date and time so that it will be good for you to keep the data refresh date and time. So the data refresh date and time is helpful because whenever the Power BI report refreshes, it just have the refresh date time, but not the actual data date time. So it is better to have a data date time inside to the report on the top right corner as well. And the next thing is the logo. So the logo should be on the top right or top left based on the business requirement because that resembles the company and then the brand. And the next thing is about the visual alignments. So when it comes to visual alignments, there has to be two things. One is the slicer pen. The slicer pen should be on the left side or on the top. And one more thing to note here is in the slicer pane, you had to keep this options like the date, brand, category and others in a sequence way, which is important. It has to be on the top and the less priority, less important things would be at the bottom. So likewise, it is easy for them to filter the report based on the selections. And then when it comes to the visual alignments, the next part is you need to keep not more than 10 visuals per page. The good thing is it will also improve the performance and it will be easy for the end user to grab what the really the report says. And also if the visual is complicated, you can add an help icon on the top right like it's shown above so that it will be helpful for the end users whenever they get confusion, they click on that, they will get an idea about what the visual actually says and what it actually inside to that visual or graph or table. And the next thing is you can add the contact information. Contact information, it will be helpful for end users as well because whenever they get some doubts on the report or is there any bugs in the report so that it will be easy for them to contact you or whoever the developer is. So these are the seven best practices. The first thing is a theme which is company based color, font size for the card, title and value and then the report name, company or brand logo, data refresh date time, visual alignments for the slicers, KP and graphs, FAQ and then the contact information. So these are the seven important best practices of the big companies. So if I miss something else, please let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, just click on the big thumbs up button. If you are new to this channel or if you haven't subscribed yet, just click on the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to get the latest notifications. But make sure you turn on the notification on your devices. If you're not a member of our channel, just hit the join button to know in detail about it. Share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any queries and feedback, just post it on the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Keep learning. See you in the next video.